Hi everyone, and welcome to a different sort of video. I'm gonna be doing a reaction slash breakdown or response or whatever you wanna call it to a recent article that was put up on the Magic Mothership. It's the State of Design article written by Mark Rosewater for 2023, where he kind of talks about the successes and failures of the past year and kind of how they were received and what they learned. So it used to be more of a lessons learned, but uh, as we'll see as we go through it, it's kind of shifted to something that seems a little less useful. And I think these articles are good ways to summarize why magic isn't in a place that I enjoy fully right now and overall just kind of go through you know how they ended up in these in this place so I'll switch over and I'm really just gonna go through it I'll highlight where I want um, he's been doing this for quite a while apparently this is his 20th year as head designer so good for him I guess or bad for us I don't know depends on who you ask so again this is for the past year of magic or whatever you want to call it so he starts with the highlights he says that sets managed to have their own creative identity while telling a singular story and i don't know that that's true i guess they told a singular story about the phyrexian arc but was it a good story no i guess they told it they did tell it and these sets did manage to have their own identity. DMU, Dominar United was pretty different from Brothers War, was different from All Will Be One. So I guess I gotta give him that one. The next one though is where we, <laughs> we leaned well into nostalgia. I really hate this kind of stuff because it makes it seem like they're, it, it just seems like a, a victory lap, right? Like, oh, well, we did the stuff that old players liked because it's set on Dominaria and, ooh, it, it does the Brothers War. But Dominaria United was not my favorite set. Brothers War was kind of meh. And the, the way they used them, they didn't lean well into it. They exploited nostalgia, which isn't what I would call a highlight. We were bold in set concepts. I can't say that people have been complaining that magic isn't pushing borders. I feel like all magic does recently is, is push borders. So I don't know that, like, I guess March of the Machine was kind of bold and that they just jammed as much as possible into it but there's nothing really in this year from dominaria and united forward that stands out to me as like wow that was awesome it's just more magic it's more modern magic and if you like that sort of stuff i guess it's okay but eh? <laughs> um this is so the lessons that they took from the year the sets were a little too creatively insular. This is um, a strange point, I guess. They were too shy and simple top-down sets based on genre clusters or story tropes. I guess for me, a Magic player, those don't do as much. Like Eldraine and Innistrad and all those, like, ugh, and poor. Neon, Neon Dynasty Kamigawa, just bleh. So I don't really mind so much that each set this year came with a little previously explanation because that's how sets should be. Like sets should chain together, I think. Like that's one of the things they did do well is they, and quality of the story notwithstanding, they told a story from set to set to set without the block structure that was like it, it linked together they did that thing in a, an acceptable manner and worrying about 
people not being able to keep up with that is like, <laughs> what are we doing here? It's a game that's been going for 25, 30 years. People who are jumping into it and learning it kind of expect that there's going to be some stuff they need to figure out if they want to keep up with the lore. Or you can just ignore the lore. It's just, it seems like a weird lesson to take here. Moving on, he says that the sets were more polarizing than normal. And I guess that's true. There were certain, like, I guess, yeah, that is true. Um, I was not a big fan of a lot of the limited environments for this year. I did not like Dominar United. I didn't like March of the Machine. And a lot of high level limited people and just the population in general really seemed to like drafting those sets, but they didn't work for me. Um, but according to Mark Rosewater himself, if everybody just likes your game and nobody likes or loves it or hates it, then you're doing it wrong. So I don't really know what the actionable... Like what, what can you do to address this point? I don't, I don't know how they, they address this going forward. Um, finally, for their lessons learned before we get on to the individual sets, there needs to be more synergy between sets. And then the very next sentence, this has been an ongoing theme ever since blocks went away. There's been a lot of very online discourse in the magic community about blocks not existing anymore and how it has hurt the ability for sets to talk to each other. So we get a set, and set has mechanics A, B, and C, and then we get the next set, and it has mechanics D, E, and F, and they don't work together. There might be an overarching theme for the year, kind of like how we had the year of double-faced cards the year before this one, but that in and of itself doesn't really, like you can't, sure, you can build a double-faced card deck but because they use, like, the Innistrad uses Transform and Kamigawa exiled and then returned them Transform, like, there wasn't a lot of mechanical identity other than just, hey, you have cards in your library that require an extra game piece in, in uh, paper uh, to play with them. So it's funny that it, it get every State of the Design article for quite a while and then we the, the sets don't talk to each other. How is this still a problem? They're so adamant. We we hear time and time again that um, sets as standalones, like without blocks, sell way better than blocks. But then we keep seeing this pop up every year in his uh, state of the designs. So they're clearly not interested in fixing it. Uh, there's, there just doesn't seem to be any other explanation. They're more interested in selling out sets over and over and over again than trying to do any sort of effort to have sets talk with each other. Like, I don't really think it's a mechanical theme that there was artifacts in Brothers War and All Will Be One because they didn't... There's nothing that cared about that. So, like, yeah, there were maybe a higher number of artifacts in Brothers War, definitely, and maybe in All We One, I don't even know. But it doesn't feel like it matters. If you want to build an artifact deck, you're probably just looking at cards from Brothers War and maybe some powerful artifacts that are floating around in other sets. You're not getting any extra synergy help from new cards. So if you want to build those decks, especially if you're playing Standard, you don't get anything when a new set comes out. It's just a bunch of new cards that don't talk with your cards and you're left either trying to fill in your generic power slots or wondering why you're playing standard, which I think has obviously happened a whole bunch in Magic's recent history because nobody plays standard anymore. And we used to play standard and standard was good. And blocks helped that because you would get a whole block of three sets like Zendikar block 
Well, Zendikar's block's not a great example. Um, like Shards of Alara block, where it's all about multicolor. So you get three sets worth of multicolor support. Or Lorwyn Shadowmoor, even though it's two small sets mashed together into a super block, you have the overarching themes of tribal, sorry, typal, and uh, color matters mashing themselves together. Like the, the sets talk to each other in a way they just don't anymore. All right, so let's get into Dominar United. This one actually took me by surprise. Um, I don't feel like this set felt like Invasion at all to me, where I definitely did get the vibe from original Dominaria that it had been modeled off after those resonant ideas that um, old magic had, original magic had, and that it was kind of a, a return to form in a way. And I've, I've done a lot of Invasion, Plane Shift, Apocalypse drafts. Dominar United did not feel like Invasion to me. And I, I have not seen this particular point of feedback anywhere about Dominar United. Again, people like the draft format, and I disagree with that, but I have not seen this particular piece of feedback. So that was interesting to me that this showed up. Here's more nostalgia pandering that the many references were appreciated. Shut up. It's stupid. People who this appease are amused by shiny objects and like wind rustling a paper bag. It's a stupid point. If you haven't noticed already, we're not really here to make friends. Uh, the set had enjoyable limited play, I guess. People liked it. I can't, I cannot dispute the fact that people liked it. I really didn't, and we'll get to that in one of the lessons further down. This was not something that I took from the set that it felt a bit generic. Um, I guess not really. For, for all of its many faults, it did a decent job of showing off how varied the plane of Dominaria is, which is one of, I think, its strengths and something that Watsi has leaned away from because because Dominaria has all these continents and all these different cultures and and settings that they feel like it doesn't have an identity, so they gave it the stupid, like, legends and history identity back in original Dominaria, and fine, whatever. whatever. I mean, you're not gonna win all those fights, but it didn't feel generic because you had, like, you had the Vildalians and you had the Benalish Knights. I thought it's a weird lesson to take. Um, I would not have called the set safe by, by any means. Um, the set had a number of flavor-related issues. I mean, the worst part of the flavor for me was that the story was bad. I didn't really mind any of the particular cards themselves. The, the flavor problems with Dominaria United are related to the lore and not the cards themselves. So I don't I'm not sure if he's really mentioning that or lumping that together, but like the the story was a mess. Somehow the sleeper agents had already infiltrated Dominaria and achieved planar travel. Somehow, um, um how did they do that? Never explained. They've been there for so long they're ingrained in all of the cultures such that multiple civilizations fell all at once? Please. And then the whole shouldered thing is just like overused and especially given that the original invasion, the Phyrexian invasion of Dominaria was planned for thousands of years by Yawgmoth and like knockoff Shieldred shows up and pretty much accomplishes what he couldn't in a couple months? Come on. So I guess there were quite a few flavor issues with the set then. Oh, Limited had some issues, you don't say. Some players, me, felt it was too easy to splash other colors of mana. Yeah, because they just let you splash. 
they just let you splash. There's common dual lands inserted into the packs instead of you know, having to actually spend draft picks on them. It just kind of guaranteed to get them. And but there just there wasn't there and this is an ongoing issue with magic. There's no way to punish greedy land maces anymore. Other than to just try and go as fast as possible. But especially in formats where there's a higher life total, there's there's no way to beat anybody who's going tap land, tap land, tap land, and then just best powerful spells sludge over and over and over again. There's just there's there's no way to do it. So Cool, yeah, Limited did have some issues there, Mark. Unfinity. I, um... I don't even know I'm gonna, gonna talk about Unfinity. It's just such a nothing set. I guess I'll skim through it. See, players love the humor and flavor of the set. Sure they did, bud. You keep telling yourself that. There are a lot of positive comments about the set's Limited play. Can't speak to it. Never played it. Never had any desire to play it. Some players appreciated that over half the cards were eternal legal. That feels like a reach there, bud. That some players, like, yeah, I guess you could say that some players liked it, but you could say that some players like land destruction, like me. And it's still true, so it's a dumb thing to say. Lessons. Other players greatly disliked that there were eternal legal cards in set. I don't care. Honestly, whatever. His... His crusade to try and get silver border cards more accepted, I don't care. That's a conversation that y'all need to have with your playgroups. If you don't want somebody playing goofy, stupid silver border cards, tell them. If they want to play those stupid cards, let them because they're bad. And they're not, like, <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's, such a, it's such a dumb thing for the playgroup to be concerned about and for wizards to be concerned about. But at least when they were silver border, they were easily identifiable, and I didn't have to look for some stupid acorn-shaped seal on the bottom of a card that may or may not be hollow foil. I just don't. Handled terribly. The set had too much complexity. I mean, again, I didn't I didn't play with any of the cards. Attractions are stupid. Like at least what was it? Uh, contraptions. At least you can do something with those that's kind of mechanically interesting attractions are like hey you rolled a dice did something happen nope up oh, too bad hope you do it next turn woo wacky and stickers can just go die that was such a dumb dumb thing which final point they had several logistical issues in addition to being garbage they were small, easy to lose, and the glue didn't hold. Oh man, who could have foreseen any of that happening? Whoa. Brothers War. Alrighty. Many, many players liked having a set that looked back at one of Magic's greatest stories. This is true. That's fair. Um, it was it was good that we finally got a set that talks about Brothers War. It's, it is kind of one of the foundational events of magic and it hasn't had a set yet we just had antiquities which talked about it so it, it was cool to to look back on that good job mechanics were generally generally well received again agreed i'll give that i liked prototype i like unearth i um the meld is whatever i Meld is fine. It only ever shows up on like one or two cards. Well, I guess two or more cards. And so it doesn't end up mattering all that often. I wish we could see some mod or some lower rarity meld cards. Kind of like how the host and augment stuff worked in Unstable, whatever one that one was. And like that's a good use of an unset, is to push that design, see if you can make something like that work. Um, power stones or whatever power i thought like they worked but it was just such a i wouldn't even consider it a mechanic it's just power stones it's just a token type is that a mechanic <laughs> they upped their bonus sheet game did they now oh the bonus sheets and this is something that has been going on a lot 
uh, with recent sets, and probably one of the reasons I haven't really enjoyed a lot of these limited environments that are bonus sheet prominent is because they they warp the limited environment around them. In in Dominar United, you would just get some super bomb legend in your pack, and you're like, oh cool. I guess no one gets to uh, challenge me because I have this card that if I play it, I win because it's from an old set that was good and the answers in that set were medium at best. And in Brothers War, it was even worse because all of the bonus sheet cards were artifacts and all of them were generic artifacts at that. So you have a much higher level of playable bombs floating around the format. And I just didn't like it. Like you just open Worm Coil and you can expect to open Worm Coil a reasonable amount of the time, like the time as you as you draft the set often enough, like it's just, it's just bad. It's just bad and I don't like it. Um, the set was hard to connect to if you didn't know the source material. I don't know, again, I don't know who who the people are that are saying this and why we should listen to them because if you don't understand it you look it up because if you care about the lore you look it up if you don't care about the lore you just play the cards so who who are the people who care about the lore but are upset that they have to look it up come on the limited Environment was a bit fast for a set with a theme of giant robots. Okay, theme of giant robots is a little much. There were some proto, like the prototype cards, I guess did that, sure. But I didn't feel like that was a theme of the set. I know that they brought the Transformers in. Well, that's the next point, but like, it just, sure, okay, sorry. Giant robots, not a real theme. Um, the limited environment was a bit fast and it didn't let you really ramp out. You couldn't use the power stones to cast those big colorless non-prototyped artifacts because you're just getting your face smushed in, which is kind of a problem that has been around with the sets of this year a lot, is that you, you don't get to do anything fun with the set because you're just getting your face smooshed and they point to rise of eldrazi here which is a really fun limited environment that really tones down the aggro elements to let you do the things that the set was about so yeah it, it would have been nice if the blue green power stone deck wasn't garbage in in that format but sure i guess that's a lesson the transformers cards felt out of place I honestly didn't even engage with this. I didn't realize that it was a thing. Sure, what I people who are mad about this again, slow your roll, whatever. You bought a set booster. What are you why are you complaining that you got a Transformers card? It's a weird thing to take from this. Oh boy, all will be one. Players generally enjoyed the reworking of poison. Not this guy. Infect is good. Wither is good. R&D needs to stop being afraid of minus one, minus one counters. Toxic is just, they just didn't want to do the work to design around uh, Infect. So they came up with some other version of it that's not quite as bad as Poisonous, but then they had to give it a new name and Make sure that it wasn't stifleable and it's just whatever. If they want to run around the room high fiving each other about that, sure, whatever. It wasn't for me. The use of oil counters created a unique environment that was appreciated. Did it though? The oil counter deck wasn't super a thing. It's just that its cards were good. Occasionally we make sets that use minus one minus one counters. Yeah, that would be nice, but you don't do that anymore. I I just I really struggle when they introduce 
a new type of counter and it functions exactly the same as some other type of counter. You know what we have in Magic? We have charge counters. And these could have been charge counters. They tie back to Mirrodin as it goes. We could show the Phyrexians appropriating that uh, Mirren mechanic into their own designs. And they're used as markers, resources, and power toughness setters just the way oil counters are. And they still interact with proliferate. So calling them oil counters, ooh, Phyrexians oil, like, okay, I don't, I just, I don't understand why it needed to be called oil. The Phyrexian feel permeated throughout the set. I consider myself someone who tries to keep up with the lore of magic. I have a lot of the old books that used to come in the bundles on my shelf. I have consumed, I would say, more magic lore than the average player, and still do. Maybe I'm just not the... I don't interact with the sets in this way that it has a feel of Phyrexian, because I would say that it doesn't. The Phyrexian feel is best illustrated by the invasion block and like new Phyrexia is a good one that feels Phyrexian. And some of the, the Phyrexian cards out of Tempest block, like those feel, they feel mean, they feel otherworldly and horrible. And I just, I, I did not get that from All Will Be One because they just existed. It's like, ooh, look, this guy's got cables coming out of his back, or this beast has an extra mouth. And you're like, okay, cool, cool. It just, to me, it felt like they did not land the flavor of Phyrexians. It doesn't even feel like new Phyrexia because that, that set felt transversive and invasive and like just very aggressively taking Mirrodin and making it its own and then oh no we got some Praetors doing their own stuff shrug the flavor was off-putting I the set was too bleak and icky What do they want? What <laughs> What are we doing here? We just had a set that was very like kind of war movie gritty with Brothers War, but Dominaria United much like Dominaria itself still felt like this bright and colorful and happy set even with the Phyrexians because they don't have a consistent mechanical or uh, visual style to them anymore. It's just, who are these people? I just would love, no, I don't want to meet. I would say I'd love to meet these people. No, I don't, because these are not people that I would get along with. The set was too parasitic within the confines of standard, so this is tying back to them not being able to link sets together. But yeah, so we have, we have the Phyrexians. You set the Phyrexian mechanic as this toxic mechanic. So this is the new Phyrexia, the home world of this strain of Phyrexians toxic is what they're all about and then we go to march the machine and there's not toxic to be found anywhere like how how can that be did they do they lose their infectious nature when they go through the omen paths like it's how do you mess that up why are you so afraid to have sets talk to each other limited was too fast oh no yeah you weren't allowed to do anything fun because you're getting your face smushed. I don't really know that... Oh, so so here they even say there were a lot of themes that players didn't get to explore. But the use of oil counters created a unique environment that was appreciated. So which is it? Is it both? 
Is it exactly 50-50 or did more people appreciate the oil counters because they were spending the downtime of their drafts being dead or what? Anyway, March of the Machine, a set that, oof, not for me in any sense, apparently. It had very solid and enjoyable mechanics. There was a lot mechanically going on in March of the Machines. You can say that again. The new card type, that, yeah, cool. I didn't really know that we needed it, but I like the way the battles play, but you don't get to really mess with them all that much because there's a crazy bonus sheet and there's all sorts of other stuff happening in the set that overshadow them. And there was only really one color pair that cared about them. And that color pair was bad in Limited if it was trying to do the battle thing. Um, so yeah, they, they are continually called out. Sure, I'll, I'll add my voice to that. They are a cool new addition to the game. Um, incubate is whatever. Holy filler mechanic. I guess it's cool that they allow tokens to transform now, so that if I make a copy of a Curious Homunculus, it can still transform. That's cool, I guess. Um, the Phyrexian transformation cards work. I don't know. I'm torn on those. I appreciate when Phyrexian mana shows up. I don't... I didn't really like that it was always an off-color activation. Although I get, again, why you do that. But it lets... For a an era of design that is so worried about bends and breaks in the color pie, you bring Phyrexian mana back and let all of these cards circumvent the color pie... But the, the most egregious one is the, I think it's the, the green tree folk idiot who transforms for Phyrexian black and then he kills something uh, based on his power. And like, yeah, I get that that's technically like a, a, a fight spell or a bite spell, but it's letting green have access to destroy a creature. But then they want to cry about color breaks and color bends and all that. So they're doing it on purpose. The Phyrexian Praetors that turned into sagas were popular. Yeah, because people like Praetors. Cool, good job. You made a cool cycle. Um, the gameplay of Backup and Convoke. Backup, pretty forgettable to me. It played well. It just it doesn't strike me as something that like, oh man, I can't wait for backup to come back. Same with Convoke. They, they, they play well. They're fine mechanics, but they're not something like, man, yeah, I want to return to those. Um, a very fun limited environment. Not really. Not for me. I uh, just didn't... I didn't like the format. It's It was a lot of ramping and fixing to play the best spells that you picked off your bonus sheet and the ridiculous power level of the mythics and rares in the set just made it really a miss for me because it doesn't it didn't come down to how well I drafted my deck and how well I pilot it it comes down to if I turn my deck of cards over and turn your deck of cards over and we look at who has like what each person has in their deck oh you have a mythic i lose i can never beat that that's not that's not good magic good magic is interaction not just gold fishing against each other which is a lot of what this limited format felt like to me many players loved the immense scope of the set it sure had a big scope I, I don't know that I heard anybody saying they liked it. As we'll see in the lessons, the story was too big for one set. 
it very much felt like the invasion happened and then they just lost. All the Phyrexians just lost everywhere because the Wi-Fi oil got exploded or something thanks to Angel Elspeth. And so you don't have any time to to appreciate that we're going to all of these cool new planes or seeing planes that we haven't seen in years and years and years and how the Phyrexians are interacting with them because the Phyrexians are dead already and we're trying to think about how the worlds will move on in the wake of the invasion where it didn't seem like there were any stakes that like there it never felt like the Phyrexians were in danger of winning they were always gonna lose and of course they were always gonna lose because this is you know serialized storytelling like comics but they're they're just there weren't there's no consequences. The consequence is that Zalfir is somehow its own plane now? Ooh, that seems so bad. And we'll get to Aftermath and those story garbage points later. Um, yeah, the Phyrexians were too easily defeated. Yes, we just talked about that. Limited was too complex and a bit bomby. I don't know about too complex. It did have a lot... Of, it, it definitely had a lot of things going on with it but it didn't feel to me like it was inscrutable but I can, I can see and can see that there are people who there's a lot of different pieces individually happening in that set especially with the, the multiverse legends or, or whatever and the team ups and all that stuff like there's there's a lot going on and it doesn't give any particular um mechanic room to breathe or exist because you by the time you've learned your cards you're still trying to learn all of your opponent's cards which are doing completely different things than yours are and so it, it wasn't it wasn't good it wasn't good um okay and wrap this up. What do we have? Aftermath. Oh, cool. We're almost done. Aftermath. <laughs> the set that nobody liked. Except apparently players liked that Watsi was experimenting. Who are the players that are at asking Watsi to produce sets without limited in mind? And if you explain to those people the purpose that limited serves would they still hold that opinion like you can go buy precons you can buy set boosters now if you don't care about limited so aftermath doesn't seem like that set and that feels like they're really trying to pull to have any number of bullets in the highlight section here there were a bunch of fun individual designs. It felt like March of the Machine Commander Edition 2.0. There, and it was ostensibly marketed as Standard Horizons, kind of. But all of the legendary creatures just felt like Commander Bait. The uncommons were just like, other than what's that? Um, it's not Washout. But there's there's like the the blue bounce spell that bounces all non-creature permanents like other than that can anybody even name an uncommon that was in the set so yeah there were many commander players who enjoyed that some of their favorite characters could now be commanders sure i guess good for them it didn't seem like the right set to put those in the set was too small 50 cards just isn't enough for the whole set. Uh, no. It's really not. And sure, there's merit in trying to have created... in trying to create a set that doesn't have draft chaff, but the set is pretty much all chaff because none of the cards mattered for standard, and people are just chasing the rares once 
to put into their commander decks. So yeah, there, there's a lot of duplication. Even though it was just 50 cards, it somehow still managed to be like 250 cards though because of all the stupid alternate treatments. So there was a lot of duplication in cards that you were getting, but not specifically the version of the card that you get were getting, which makes it hard to target a specific version too. Players didn't like paying the same amount for fewer cards. Whoa. Whoa. Really? Insane. The set was sold as story-focused, but not much happened story-wise in the set. It's true. Somehow, they crammed an entire arc wrap-up into March of the Machine, realized somewhere along the way that they needed to do a, a stinger sequel thing to try and explain the stakes a little bit and what what happened in the wake of it and they just managed to not do that how they didn't how did they how did they how do you miss how do you mess that up like who's who's supposed to be looking at this and like where's the the ninth man or whatever it's called where's the doubters to say hey uh did we actually do this thing that we're selling it as? They, they didn't. Many players seemed unhappy with the Planeswalkers losing their sparks. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Planeswalkers are the worst thing, card type-wise, to happen to Magic since Lorwyn. I said it. And if... This means that we only have to deal with one new Planeswalker every premiere set, because we don't have standard sets anymore, then that's good. If there are fewer Planeswalkers around, good. It's a bad card type. Another year gone by. I love that he writes it, I hope my insights reflect a lot of your feelings about this year's sets. Not really insights there, Mark. They're just points when you don't really look critically at yourself or talk about what you're going to do to address that. And I get that you're working years ahead and you may have already addressed some of this, but it's still nice to see that like, hey, we've taken this point and look forward to seeing our attempts to address this going forward. Like, just give us something. So... Yeah, I think that about does it. Got through the whole thing. Um, thanks for sitting through that. I haven't seen a lot of people in the magic YouTube sphere talking about that specific article, and I always have thoughts. I will always have thoughts about the, the state of design of magic, so I thought it might be fun to, to run through that. I didn't expect that to be such a long video. I thought I'd get through it a little bit faster. But, you know, if you like these sorts of things, let me know. And uh, I'll do them again as relevant information comes out. But uh, until then, thank you all for watching. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.